is episode number 309 of the Phil Buster Radio Report. Um, I'm back after a weekend break. Sometimes you gotta take a break from ufology. Sometimes you just gotta take a step back and see what the fuck people are doing around you and realize what the hell's going on. And at times ufology gets a little crazy. It gets a little nutty to the point where you just need a reality check. Just gotta stop and... Smell the fucking roses sometimes. This is 309. We're talking about space. There is uh, nothing ufology concerned to talk about. No news reports like that. Most of the stuff has to do with science and and what's going on with uh, recent endeavors by Japan. And another explanation that we touched upon over the summer regarding what's happening in our own solar system that might be causing a particular planet to be misidentified. Nonetheless, you guys got to know that I am Manny Moonraker, and I'm here to hang out with you guys. I got to say what's up to Dave. He's in the chat box. Dave, you chimed in just in time. Actually, Dave, Dave G, I think Dave G might be down under somewhere. And this particular uh, situation we're going to talk about in the first news article has to do with uh, a situation from down under. Listen, I, uh, Dave, I can't help you. But you, you may be in danger. You may be in grave danger. As the last few days, I've been uh, dealing with a uh, tooth problem And I kind of ranted about it in the last episode where we kind of went on and on uh, regarding this this situation uh, about how we're being rubber-dicked by medical science and dentists having us live like uh, just a little bit better than uh, George Washington when he had the wooden teeth. So now we got porcelain teeth, but the fuckers don't last very long. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. That's... uh, that's probably the main reason why I didn't log on the last three days. Because Monday I didn't feel like doing it either. Though I had plenty of medication. It's not exactly something I like to do. But uh, it is what it is. Can't really make any excuses behind that. Uh, Dave says yes, uh, he is an Aussie. No! Dave, you can't say unfortunately I'm an Aussie. Come on! That's the land of... Of uh, down under, where is it? What's it? Uh, the women, the women roar and the the men plunder, and then something like that, something like that. And you know, Vegemite, come on, stop fucking around. Um, I got a track that I'm going to play, and and reason why I'm playing this track right from the get go before we get into the news article, because it reminded me of something that I that we used to say back in the day, back in uh, New York. Whenever somebody just showed that they had, I don't know, chutzpah, that they were like running things, we said that, uh, because we wouldn't tell them this, because some of the people that you identified that had this kind of a situation going on were not people that you'd mess around with. But we'd say they had uh, elephantitis, the balls. Yeah, their balls were hanging low and large. So uh, you couldn't screw with them. You could not screw with them. There are plenty of times where we came across stray animals that had elephant tires with the balls, and they were scary as fuck. But uh, when you, you come across someone that says they've got elephant tires with the balls, and you see it in their attitude, you better run. The name of this track is called Elephant Titus. Oh, 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 
just uh, I have a message for Dave. Uh, just Dave, listen to me for a second. But you know, when when I talked about that lyric from Men at Work, you know, where the women, where's the women, the women work and the men plunder. I I swear, folks, I I pictured Dave just jumping off his chair uh, with, with the elephant elephantitis going on and pounding on his chest because he's about to go plunder. Sorry, Dave, but that's what uh, that's what crossed my mind at the moment. It's a great song, man. At work, I'd play it, but you know, copyright infringement can be uh, screwing around with that. This first news article goes out to Dave and anyone in the neighborhood of uh, Australia, basically. The whole fucking country. Everyone out there needs to be aware of what the fuck is about to go down next year in your neck of the woods. Like, I, what I'm picturing is zombies. That, that's what I'm telling you, Dave. Take note. Write this down. I want you to put it in the, new, uh, the local paper. Let them know the man in Moonraker said... They need to do headshots starting January 2020. It's important. Really important. Because the Japanese folks, Japan, is dropping on Australia samples from 4.2 far. Yeah, apparently Hayabusa 2, uh, as of late, has been testing its ion engines because... It's coming back home. And no, it's not coming back home to Japan. Yeah. The Hayabusa 2 is coming back home to Australia. And here's my thing. And let's just let's let's just forget about the whole my country, your country bullshit. Guys, just just let's let's clear those lines. But if someone drops a bunch of alien whatever it is on my neighborhood, I would have uh, an issue with that. Don't you think that's wrong? So the Japanese basically collected all the shit they needed to collect from the the Rigu, the Ryugu, the, I, I don't fuck, it's like a street fighter name. I don't know what the hell this is about. I don't know. It's a <laughs> R-Y-U-G-U, Ryugu. Uh, yeah, all you can. Uh, so basically, back in uh, 2018, they dropped some little probes to collect samples from this particular meteor, and they did it, right? They actually recovered samples from this rock in space, uh, what people in the science community call a near-Earth object. So this thing... The Hayabusa 2 has been hanging around, dropping shit onto this rock. And uh, basically, the lucky people of Australia, might, are going to be receiving the artifacts of this particular endeavor. Now, you know, if I was in Australia, no matter where the fuck it is that it's going to land, and actually the (laughs) the article actually makes note of where it's going to be, the Woomera prohibited area. Well, that's pretty fucking exact, isn't that, Japan? How the fuck do you know where exactly this load is going to be dropped? Fuck. Could you imagine someone from Japan right now is listening to this podcast involved with the Japanese space agency? They've got a little tires of the balls right now. They're like, yeah, Murica, tell them. We're about to decimate that whole entire prohibited area. It ain't prohibited with us. We're going in swinging. December 2020 is basically when the uh, Japanese are saying this particular probe. <laughs> probe. Funny that uh, we're using the word probe. I'm just saying. There's a sign here somewhere. Somewhere for the folks in Australia. Uh, shit, you guys need to put up some kind of resistance here. 
Like, drop that shit in the water. Come on, stop fucking around. Why are you going to drop it on Australia? Drop it in fucking Japan. Make the bitch wait for however long it is. Drop it in your own fucking country. Really? My heart goes out to the people in Australia because they're going to have to deal with the zombie kangaroos and the wallaroos and whatever the fuck it is out there. Crocodiles and shit. It's, it sounds like it's going to be dangerous. It is going to be totally freaking dangerous. What What is wrong with them? How could they think that this is a good thing? This is just uh, ridiculous. Uh, uh, that's all I'm saying. So apparently this thing is returning back to Earth in uh, December 2020. Now, it is possible it will be delayed some because of the Japanese Space Agency is thinking about maybe taking a detour and uh, looking at another possible asteroid to get some more shit from. So the southern part of Australia, the Woomera prohibited area, might escape having this bullet in its head because Japan might be a little greedy and shit. They might be greedy as fuck and going after another one. Another asteroid on their target. I just don't think that... um, Shit, I don't think it's a good idea. I think really, if you're returning shit from space, you need to make sure that you're landing this in a place, and I understand it's this prohibited area, where humans are long, long far away. Why can't they stop this thing at the ISS? Really, is that really so difficult to do? Stop this thing by the ISS. Let the folks hanging out around the planet in space examine and test what this Hayabusa is bringing back. But you're going to put the people of Australia in danger with your zombie virus. I don't know. I think that um, there's got to be rules for stuff like this. You you can't just be fucking around like this and dropping your uh, foreign load where the fuck you want to. That's just not right. And uh, the article actually says that the ion engines were actually uh, tested today. December 3rd. So, you know, listen, you guys, you guys think about it. Is this right? Can you really do that? Can you really take stuff from space, which you have no idea what the fuck it is? You're just collecting the shit. And then drop it on another country just because, hey, um, it's the best spot for us to drop this. Can you guys just uh, watch it? Watch it, please. (laughs) Dave says, uh, as long as this zombie thing will be better than the Walking Dead series. Dave, you may be Carl. I'm telling you, Dave, you may be the Australian Carl. Think about that. Think about it. You walking around the woods, one fucking patch over your eye, a cowboy hat, and not be able to shoot a damn thing. Carl. Dave Carl. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. That could be a problem for a lot of people in Australia. So that's the story right now. We're going to see what happens. Are the is, is the Japanese uh, space agency going to uh, derail this plan because it's going to go chase something else? Or is Dave G in Australia going to have to deal with the zombies? Uh, that's going to be crazy. I don't know. There's a there's a lot of wallaroos out there and a, a lot of kangaroos that uh, may need some tending to. With a bullet right between the eyes. And let me tell you, I've seen some kangaroos out there that are buff as fuck. I mean, they look like they need to be in some kind of professional bodybuilding organization for just for fucking kangaroos. What the fuck do they feed those guys? It's gotta be that Vegemite. It's gotta be. Want it easy, want it badly, but I can get what I want. Too much pressure, too much pleasure. Not much to rely on Your love ain't free It's killing me I want it to end all Cause I've been trying I've been waiting Waiting for something
so long I'm waiting, 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 waiting Waiting, 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 waiting give a shout out to green man uh he just joined i you know what it's funny to me because it's starting to feel and i want to say these guys were the reason why i had this uh thursday freak out and today's only tuesday but i feel like this is becoming the cheers of ufology and uh green man's in hey you know what when, when uh norm walks into the, the bar everyone like stands up and greets norm uh these are the two guys it's dave and greenman they're um, basically the norms of of UFO Bus Radio at night. Uh, so anyway, Dave Dave says, "Hey, uh, it's expensive as hell to hit one of these uh, flipping kangaroos. I want to know how expensive it is. I would imagine that some of the kangaroos I've seen, I'll be honest with you, they would cause serious damage to your vehicle if you were to crash into them things." I'm telling you, they rival some of these uh, smaller bodybuilders. The IFBB right now, uh, they are like freaking stacked. Jeez, Louise, give me some of their steroids. I'm ready for that shit. Um, there was a question here about agreements catching up, basically, to the whole kangaroo situation and the zombies that are going. To, <laughs> they're going to be coming to Australia uh, recently, soon, any moment now, thanks to Japan. I mean, the the Japanese are creating their own Godzilla in freaking Australia. That's all I got to say about that. I don't want to get too crazy on it. Um, I got a message for uh, Tony in Germany. Now, Tony, uh, you know, he's always responding on Facebook and YouTube. But I got to say this. Hey, Tony. I see all the uh, crazy equipment you got to create music. I, I know you produce music. I don't speak as Deutsch, but, you know, I could definitely use some help with my intros because uh, they need a touch of professionalism. So, come on. Work it out.
Terms of agreement agrees. Some of these uh, kangaroos are buff as hell. They really are. Like, if I can figure out what the hell they do to work out the way... I, I still say it's the Vegemite. I don't think that Dave agrees, but... Dang, some of these guys, these kangaroos... Jeez, they could put a hurting on someone. The next story is about primordial black holes. And I want to apologize to anyone uh, just up front. Up front, I want to say, hey, <sighs> sometimes when I say black holes, it sounds like black holes, thanks to uh, Big O, because when we... <laughs> When he first talked about black holes, he kept on saying, uh, he kept on saying black holes. That got us a lot of uh, negative attention. But thank you, Big O, for placing that in my mind. Uh, big shout out to Guter. Guter is uh, at work, but listening. Guter, I think you might have missed out on the whole uh, steroid-laced kangaroos, but uh, you'll catch up later. I'm pretty sure you will. But right now, we're going to talk about some crazy shit that's happening in our own solar system, according to science, and Planet Nine, Nibiru, the Death Star. Planet Nine may not be a planet at all, says a few Poindexters. Instead, it might be a primordial black hole, shocking study suggests. What the fuck is shocking about this? Like, can't you leave the fucking planet alone? Can't you just let it be whatever the fuck it wants to be? Apparently not. So let, let's just take a, a backtrack. Let's go back in time. Like, I feel like... We're going to go back in time right now. Primordial black holes. We talked about this, I want to say it's about a few months ago. But as a, refle- a refresher, let's just do this. Basically, primordial means way back when... Way back when. Like, if you're having a flashback, you're sitting for eons waiting for the effect to finish because it's that far back. Primordial black holes were born very early in the life of the universe. That's how far back it is. I mean, shit. That's a long time ago. It says a mere fraction of a second after the Big Bang... And again, it seems like we're having all these uh, pornographic references in science. Uh, After the Big Bang, it was a long time before stars or galaxies and other types of black holes could exist. But some theories predict that primordial black holes should have popped onto the scene anyway. And the reason for this, it's because in that fraction of a second after the universe itself began, space was not completely homogeneous aka the same at every point instead some of the areas were denser and hotter than others and these dense regions could have collapsed into black holes yeah so what they're saying right now is that there is a theory that's being uh, touted about talked about printed in non-peer-reviewed documents. And I want, I want to call that out. This is not a study that went through Harvard and then went into some other university and another and Yale and all these other universities and people are looking at it and co-signing on it. No, they're not doing that. This is a, a shitload of studies that this particular paper snuck into that was not peer review, at least not yet. What they're saying is that basically there's another theory, right? Actually, there's a couple theories. One is that there might be a chunk of trans-Neptunian objects that are hanging out past, uh, past Neptune Pluto, and there's so many of them that they're causing a collective gravitational pull on these objects, on, you know, uh, Neptune, these TNOs, and all these guys, they're all being impacted by this particular mass of asteroids, or, I mean, it could be anything. It could be small planets. It could be dwarf planets, mixed in with a bunch of rocks, all past the Kuiper Belt. So one theory is that the mass of these objects, because they're huddled together 
like a brood, like an attacking zombie in southern Australia, a bunch of them, that they're having a gravitational effect on Kuiper Belt items and TNO objects. The other theory is that there is a fucking planet out there, but it's so fucking far out, it is dark. So we can't find it. We can't see it. It's not reflecting light. I mean, it's the darkest place you want to fucking be ever. But it's so big, it is so much larger than the planet Earth, that it has a gravitational effect on Kuiper Belt TNO objects. Then there's this one, that there may be a primordial black hole sitting somewhere in the outer reachers. Uh, reachers. <laughs> I'm still seeing zombies like reaching at people. Uh, outer reaches of our solar system, really tiny, so small. It, again, it cannot be. The funny is they freaking say that our technology is shit every single time as a way to identify things that they can't explain. Yeah, our technology sucks. We can't pick up a fucking planet two, three times the size of Earth because it's too far. Yeah, we can't pick up a tiny black hole because we don't equip ourselves that way. There's always a reason why we can't do it. Our technology right now, if there is a primordial black hole that's causing all this gravitational pull way 4.2 far in our solar system, we're not going to know because it's not going to tell us. The funny thing is that a lot of this stuff really depends on mathematical equations. And I believe that there is enough information that we should be able, in some way, if someone gave two fucks about it, to extrapolate. Where in the flying fuck is this anomaly at that's causing all these things. And let me tell you, that I told you about the stuff that was uh, science-related, but there's people out there are saying that there's a fucking Death Star out there waiting where E.T. goes to hang out and do missions to the planet Earth to probe you guys, to uh, mutilate the cattle, and then go back. But that's that goes with on... Uh, without reason, because they say that about the uh, moon as well. The artificial moon, you know, the one that was placed here by aliens. I don't know. I can't I can't explain any of this. It just makes no sense to me. But, you know, is there such a thing as a primordial black hole? It is a theory. It is a theory that hasn't been validated or talked about by anyone. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, Greenman says that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxies, he thinks. Uh, there was an article about that recently, uh, within the last month, about a surprise black hole in the center of our own galaxy. Everything is a goddamn surprise. Come on. Here's a weird thing. We base our existence and our knowledge on science that's all theoretical. So when thing, when a thing comes across and defies the theory, funny how they don't really accept it because it's got to be some kind of anomaly. All I'm saying is, the math is not wrong. The computer simulations are not wrong. There is something significant in size greater than our planet's density probably larger in size having a serious impact on trans Neptunian objects things in the Kuiper belt and it's not by accident this isn't something that uh, is fly by night if anything that I could say is this the measurements are probably extremely correct they are real we just need to have our point dexters catch up to the science behind it and maybe then we'll figure out what in the flying fuck is going on at the end of our solar system.
I'm gonna say it right now. The uh, <laughs> the chat box on speaker dot com it's uh it's fired up. I don't think I can keep up with uh, Gooder, Greenman, and Dave. Their conversation is is it's uh it's taking a life of its own. These three need their own fucking podcast. I'll be honest with you. One of these days, we've got to get the three of you guys on here to talk about this. Uh, we're talking about uh, space toilets and flushing black holes and. Uh, let me just reiterate back black holes, not hose. And uh, we're also talking about the Death Star called the Moon. Now, here's one thing I got to say about that. Just uh, I'm not into black holes, of course, the other word. But I just got to say this. Um, I find it really strange, really strange. If you look at the model of our solar system and how it's traveling through space, it's not sitting on a turtle. Scratching its posterior as it just sits there waiting for stuff to come by and feed it. It is the model of a system of planets that's not static, it's dynamic. It is traveling away from the center of the universe. It'll blow your mind when you see how this happens. When the models show you how we're not just sitting there like we've been told in school, elementary school, middle school. It's not. We're not just sitting there at a particular axis on the same plane. We're actually, the entire fucking plane is moving through the, the space, basically. When you take all of that movement, all of that traveling, all that uh, getting jiggy with it in space... How the fuck is it that we only always see one side of the fucking moon? I am so perplexed by that. And I've read things that explain how that is. But really, it boggles my mind that with all this movement through the universe, that our solar system is traveling through, that our moon, we only see one rubber dicking side. Can someone give me... A good explanation for that. Not scientific. I, I Like, I really want to know. I really, the, the theories that I've read, or explanations for it, they seem like theories. Can, can you really prove to me, how in the flying fuck do we have this particular object and we only see one side? I don't know. It is, that is really, of our solar system... That's the one that really is uh, crazy as fuck to me. And that particular situation, to me, speaks volumes to people saying that it's, that it's artificial, that it's hollow. That it's not there by accident, it's there for a reason. That is just weird. I, I'm just saying, that's my, uh, that's my show breaker. If you want to read any of the articles that I talked about today, check out the description. Click on the links, because I'm not an author. I'm not writing these articles, but um, they have more information than what I shared. And I do that on purpose because you guys should stop fucking taking my word for it. I just give you the uh, cliff notes, if you will. So today I gave the cliff notes of how the kangaroos and wallabies are going to take over southern Australia, thanks to Japan. And eventually Godzilla will show up and take over the entire country of Australia. Gojira is coming, Dave. I'm warning you. And you will be Carl in a matter of about two years. And we talked about the Japanese. Yeah, that's what I just said. Fuck the Japanese at this moment. We talked about, uh, what was the other shit we just, oh fuck, we just talked about the fact that uh, pretty much Planet 9 might be a primordial black hole waiting to suck up our solar system. Could you imagine if that all of a sudden becomes like a supermassive black hole, like over time? Yeah, <sighs> We'll be too far fucked, that's for sure. I'm going to close out this podcast episode with my favorite song, Juggernaut, because I am. Ciao.